Welcome to lecture 17. In this lecture, we discuss basics of localization. And this is a topic that we will come to again and again. So we'll see as and when we need, we will discuss this as much as possible. So what exactly do we mean? So the definition. A subset U of R, R is a ring, uh, is called is multiplicatively closed if one is inside u and for all u u prime in u the product u u prime is inside u so for example the non zero elements in a domain For example, the non-zero integers in, in a domain to this is a little bit special case of the second one, R minus P, where P is a prime ideal. By definition of P being a prime ideal, it is clear that if U and U prime are not in P, the product is not in P. Okay? And one is definitely not in P. And the third example, so really we are, uh, the second one is the first, uh, so the first one is an example of the second one, and, but there's a new uh, example. So let A be, a, uh, A be an R not nilpotent. In other words, no power of A is, that is, there does not exist M such that A M is 0. Okay. Then the set 1 A, A square and so on is, uh, is multiplicatively closed. Okay. So this is what we mean, these are examples of what we mean by a multiplicatively closed set. There might be others also. For example, you could take a union of two prime ideals and then take the complement and so on. Okay. So, definition. By U inverse R, okay, or sometimes or R adjoint U inverse or sometimes R sub U, uh, sorry, U is multiplicatively closed. U is multiplicatively, maybe I should just erase this whole thing and rewrite it. Okay. Let, let U inside R be uh, multiplicatively closed set. by u inverse r or r adjoint u inverse or r sub u various uh, notational convention used by various authors okay we mean the set so these are pairs of elements from r and u such that r is in r u is in u not okay, under an equivalence relation, so equivalence classes under this equivalence relation, where this is the equivalence relation R u is equivalent to R prime u prime if there exists some u tilde in u such that okay, u tilde times r u prime minus r prime u equals 0. Okay. We denote the equivalence class of 
R, uh, equivalence class of R u by the fraction R over u. Okay. So, really we are saying we are thinking about fractions, but of course, as in q 1 over 2 is same as 2 over 4. So, it is really there. Okay. So, this is really that statement. How, how do we identify two fractions? And if you are working over a non in, in general, not just rationals, one needs to put this as the definition. Okay. Okay. So, one defines such a set and a uh, few. Uh, okay. So, uh, for example, q is z uh, u inverse z where u is z minus 0. Okay. Or the rational function field in one variable is u inverse uh, polynomial in one variable. So, this is rational function field in one variable, polynomial in one variable where u is or the non-zero polynomials. So, it is these constructions that actually the that construction u inverse r uh, generalizes. Okay. So, uh, what is uh, uh, so just a little bit of notation. If u is the complement of a prime ideal, okay, then u inverse r is typically written as written as r localized at p. I mean this is called r localized at p with subscript p. Okay. One. And two, if u is 1 a a square and so on a not nilpotent, then u inverse r is typically written as as r sub a or sometimes r adjoint 1 over a. Okay. So, this is just variations of the notation that one would keep using or, or comes across. Okay. So, this is just, okay. but why are we studying this? u inverse r is a ring, please check, okay. uh, uh, sorry maybe one should just say uh, check. This you should check. Not very difficult at all. Okay. Uh, how I mean, as how one should add fractions. Okay. Just keep. Uh, that's all that you have to keep in mind. Okay. And R two U inverse R, in which a ring element goes to the fraction R over one, is a ring map. So, z to q is injective, k adjoint x to k round brackets x is injective, but in general they it need not have such properties. So, it is injective. What property does this ring have? Okay, proposition. Every ideal of u inverse r is an extended ideal. In other words, that is, whenever if j is an ideal here, then there is an ideal in R, uh, extended ideal from R. Okay. There is an ideal in R whose extension gives j. Okay. But okay, this might some, sound like a curiosity, but it has an important application. We will prove the proposition just. This is the first time we are coming across this notion of working with fractions, etc. I will do it so that become, we become familiar with that. So, it has an important application if R is an Ethereum. U inverse R is an Ethereum. That is because uh, everything is an extended ideal. So, whatever generating set generates it in I will generate it as an U inverse R also 
but it's a finite generating set here. So that's finite generating set there. Okay. So, uh, so this is what uh, uh, this is. An, uh, so this corollary is important. So now let's uh, uh, let's prove the proposition. So let J be an ideal of U inverse R. Okay. Let take a generating set for it. Let G inside J be a generating set. Okay. So just uh, one, we keep saying generating set, there is no significance to that statement, there is no substantial significance to that statement of this proof, uh, or J itself is a generating set for G, uh, for J, so one could have just taken J itself, okay. But all I want to say is that the argument works for every generating set, okay. Now let G1 be the set R in R such that there exists U in U such that R over U is inside G. Okay, so these are the numerators that appear in the fractions inside G1. Okay. Let I be the R ideal generated by by G1. Okay. The claim is that J is the extension of I. Okay, let's uh, 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 write that. So, notice that if you, for every R over U inside G, R over U is inside uh, can be written as R times 1 over U. So, this is an element inside G1. Okay. And this is an element in U inverse R. Okay. So, in other words, G1 generates Uh, G1 generates uh, the same ideal as G, that is uh, G1 generates the same ideal as G in U inverse R, in the, local, in the after localization. Okay. G does not belong to R, so this statement makes sense only in U inverse R. And uh, from then we can conclude uh, that uh, I extended, so this now implies that, so in particular I also will, uh, I also will generate, uh, I extended to U inverse R is U is J. Okay. Notice that I itself is a subset of J, therefore if you extend I to U inverse R, it is going to be a sub ideal of J. But already the subset G1 generates J, so uh, uh, therefore I also generates J. Okay? So this is what uh, we need uh, uh, in this proof. Okay? So, this is, so every ideal is an extended ideal. Okay? So one, uh, just again one more piece of notation. We will write U inverse I for I extended to U inverse R and later we will see also for modules. So, this is uh, okay. okay. So, here is some important proposition, I mean basic properties of this which keeps, uh, which we get, uh, keep using all the time. Okay. So, U and R as above 1 for any R ideal I 
u inverse of i is u inverse of r if and only if u intersects i non trivial okay and the reason is if this is true so you should write out the details if this is true then uh, there will be some element inside i and one over that will also be inside this ring so some a divided by a that will give one okay so that's what i one will have to check okay so this is uh, so this is u inverse i becomes a full ring only if and only if u intersects the multiplicatively closed set that if and only if i intersects the multiplicatively closed set that uh, uh, that was inverted okay two Uh, if p is a uh, let p be inside p inside r be a maximal be a prime ideal okay, such that p does not intersect u okay. so p u inverse p is not going to be the whole ring then p inverse u inverse p is a prime ideal of u inverse r okay so this is what uh, we have three conversely if q is a prime ideal of u inverse r then we can look at the contraction of q to r which is a prime ideal of r and then we can extend it to uh, u inverse r so we get this one this is other than q okay. and so so th uh, these are statements that cannot that can be proved relatively uh, without difficulty so proof is left as an exercise okay so the point uh, that one uh, gets from these is the following okay so recall that what we call the prime spectrum of r is a set of prime ideals in r p a prime ideal of r okay this we did you did this in the exercises which we denote by spec r okay now what does this uh, result uh, say uh, the, the previous proposition say it says that spec of u inverse r to spec so the previous proposition says there exists an injective uh, injective map to spec r okay and the map here is if you have a q here q goes to q contracted to r and that is a prime ideal here and no from the last part if q and q prime are different then the target will also be different that's what the last part will say okay so this is uh, injective so this is one application okay so this this sort of observations have to do with giving a topology on the set spec r which we will do soon but that's where that's where this sort of discussion goes to okay so just now we can talk about localizing modules uh we can similarly define uh u inverse m for an r module m okay u inverse m the set of all m u in uh, where m is in m u is in u modulo an equivalence relation where m1 u1 is equivalent to m2 u2 if there exists some u3 so in u such that u3 times 
u2 m1 minus u1 m2 equals 0. So again it says the two fractions are same and we check this by multiplying cross multiplying the denominators. So that's the uh, I mean that's the idea behind this to work in more in to, to make it work in all generality not just with rational numbers or, or a few one needs to also put this inside here. Okay. So this is a u inverse m is a u inverse r module okay. and yeah so let f from m to n be uh, uh, be a, an r linear map map of r modules okay this gives an u inverse r linear map okay which we will define like a fraction f over 1 okay, from u inverse m to u inverse n what is the map so here are elements of the form x over u and this gets mapped to f of x over u, same u okay. so this is a, a u inverse r linear and uh, the uh, uh, okay. so any such f gives such a map okay. so one more definition in this context a ring is said to be a local ring if uh, if uh, it has a unique maximum radius. Uh, for example, okay. if you so let's uh, look at the uh, uh, the example that we saw. Uh, uh, okay. Let u be r minus p, where p is a p is a prime ideal. Of course, fields are local rings, but again, that's not. Uh, if this were the only uh, local rings, it may, this notion may not be of much use. Okay, so there are other things. So P is a maximal ideal. Now, what are the prime ideals of R localized at P? So the earlier proposition, which in part we proved and in part we didn't prove, uh, gives the following, which is that uh, there are exactly those of the form Q extended to our localized at P, where Q does not intersect the multiplicatively closed set okay. and this condition is just the same thing as Q is inside P. Okay. So this is what that proposition said that the prime ideals that, that, are, that don't become the whole ring after localizing are exactly the prime ideals that don't uh, they don't intersect the multiplicative closed set and when you extend those things you will get prime ideals and these are the only prime ideals of the localized ring of r inverse u okay so these are exactly these form so hence 
the extension of P to RP is the unique maximal ideal. of R localized at P. Okay, so this is the example, this is a, uh, an example of a, of a, and this is, this is an example of a local ring. Okay, there are other local rings also, which didn't, doesn't come out as, as localizations like this immediately. Another example. And this is very uh, closely related to uh, polynomial rings in a way. Uh, so uh, first of all, notice that polynomial rings are rare. If there are, there's more than one variable, I mean, there's at least one variable, it is not going to be a local ring because every reducible, uh, you could take an irreducible polynomial uh, for, I mean, uh, let me just explain it, sorry. Okay. So, let me just say non-example. Okay. K adjoint X is not local. Okay. Why? Uh, for every non-zero F, I mean, every reducible f, f of x and kx, the ideal generated by f of x is maximum. And there are infinitely many uh, irreducible polynomials. Okay. So therefore, uh, there are enough. Uh, so this is not a, one, I mean, one of the things that you have become familiar with in the course of this, these lectures is actually not uh, local. But, so, but an example, by k double brackets x, where one can do it for more variables, but just to get familiar, let's do one. We mean the ring of what is called formal power series. over k. Okay, so k, let's again put k to be a field. So what are these? This is just so elements of k are of the form a i x to the i, i inside n. Uh, sorry, it's not a sum. It is just, okay. so this is just a 0 plus a 1 x plus a 2 x squared and so on, and uh, no statement like, so unlike for a polynomial, for this to be a polynomial, it has to be zero after a while. In finitely many stages, it has to become zero. Here, there are no such conditions, okay? And then one can check that a zero plus a one x plus this element is a unit if and only if a0 is not 0, okay. so that's one statement one can check. Okay. The ideal generated by x is maximal and every ideal, every proper ideal of K power series ring X is inside this. Okay, so this is a local ring. Okay. And uh, so various algorithms that one can work in polynomial ring can also be extended to such power series rings. But that's not something that we will pursue very uh, at all in this course. Okay. So just one more, one piece of notation before we finish. Okay. By when we say 
we say we say rm is a local ring to say that r is a local ring with maximal ideal with unique maximal ideal m so that's uh, the end of this lecture and in the next lecture we will look at what is called determinantal trick and nakayama lemma and then we will uh, try to understand some idea of the topological aspects of spec r